Hi, the last time I was talking to you about Alexandre Dumas, he had just uh, finished writing his first novel, The Chevalier Amatal, which became an overnight success. Now, this was followed by The Three Musketeers, The Count of Monte Cristo, and The Black Tulip. And I was also talking to you about uh, his uh, collaboration um, and uh, his colla you know, collaborator friends. I got to tell you that Alexandre Dumas was uh, he well he didn't write all his novels by himself so he was sort of like to uh, creative writing what Henry Ford was to the automobile industry um, they both invented mass production now um, Henry Ford uh, invented the assembly line where each person uh, would uh, in the line would uh, install a different part of the uh, car until by the end of the uh, line you had a complete car ready for the market now, Alexandre Dumas also had an assembly line in which each writer would write a different chapter of the novel. You see, like an engineer, he would design the blueprint, the plot, or the flow of action in the novel. Then he would go to each of his writers and explain to them what had to be done and what had previously happened in the uh, novel and what must happen in the chapter to be written so that the uh, writer who wrote the next chapter would also be able to pick up on it and write his chapter. If a novel had 12 chapters to it, he would hire 12 writers to give, um, giving them each a chapter to do. And at the end of the, a production day, he would have a, a completed novel ready for market. Now, Alexandre Dumas uh, introduced engineering into uh, creative writing. So you might say that uh, he wasn't uh, a real writer, but you can't deny that he was one hell of an engineer. Now, despite having all this help, he still wrote incessantly, living on only four hours sleep a night. Even when he was in his uh, 60s, he would come home after being out on the town all night, sit down and write. In fact, he once had a bet with a friend of his that he could write a novel by himself in 72 hours, including time for food and sleep. And he won that bet with the uh, Chevalier de Maison Rouge, and he had six hours to spare. <laughs> Now, he could also number among his uh, friends great writers of his day, Lamartine, Eugene Sue, uh, de Musset, the great uh, German poet Goethe, the great French poet uh, Chateaubriand, and the great German poet Heinrich Hein, who upon his deathbed had Dumas novels read to him and wrote to Dumas, your first name and your last name are currency worth more than gold and silver. He was also friends with the great... Uh, French novelist Victor Hugo, who gave us Lena's Rob. Now, Victor Hugo uh, didn't cotton to uh, Dumas at first. And in fact, he acted very spitefully towards him. But Dumas, never being one to hold a grudge, not only forgave him, but he even defended him uh, later on, causing Hugo to come around and eventually write to him, I love you more every day, not alone, because you are one of the brilliant lights of my century, but because you are also one of its consolations. He was also friends with the great French painter Delacroix, the noted literary critic of his time, Saint Beuve, King Louis Philippe of France, and Pope Gregory the Sixteenth. Now, as I mentioned before, he was vehemently opposed to slavery, and cordially uh, used to receive Black Americans who used to uh, visit France. Among them, uh, the great comedian Ira Aldridge. More about him later. He gave away, to, away great sums of money. He created a private pension system for all those who had served him, built a castle in which he kept open house for all the world, spent more millions than he ever earned, and left life as poor as he was when he came in. Now, towards the end of his career, when um, his you know, overworked brain began to weaken, he took up an interest in cooking and became the most renowned chef of his time. More about Alexandria Dumas later.